Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about repeated execution in Mathematica. In many cases we want to execute commands over and over again and computers are very good at doing things uh, repeatedly. So to do that we can use do loops. So the syntax for that uh, would be do something and then from i equals a until i equals b where i is an iterator that we iterate over and then we have to close this so um, for example let's suppose I want to count from 1 to 10 I could do print the number i from 1 to 10 shift return and that counts from 1 to 10 now let's suppose I want to do the same thing but uh, not necessarily in steps of one so the syntax for that would be do something from i equals one to i equals b in steps of s so let's suppose I want to count from one to ten but in steps of two then I could simply add a comma two in this command and that would go one, three, five, seven, nine, and then it would stop. Um, and it would not reach 10 because uh, 10 is not an odd number. Let's look at another example. Let's suppose I want to do a, a summation. Uh, so I can start with an initial value s equals zero, and then use a do loop and set s equal to s plus 1 and then iterate from i equals 1 up to let's say I want to add all numbers from 1 to 20 then that would one add 1 uh, to s 20 times and then I can output the value of s. Okay, so what we did here was to uh, perform addition of one to s 20 times over. Um, let's suppose we want to do something slightly different. Let's suppose I want to sum all integers from 2 to 8. So I want to sum all integers from 2 to 8. Um, I can initialize the sum to 0 and then use a do loop and I would have to use s equals s plus i where i goes from 2 to 8 so this is going to take i equals 2 and then i equals 3 and 4 5 up to 8 and add all of these together and let's let's print out the value of s and the result I get is uh, 35 and just to get to check if this is the right result I could use a symbol sum here from i equals 0 to 8 of i and mathematica will calculate this or I could use the command sum i from i equals 2 to 8 
and the result is 35. Uh, just bear in mind that th when you use the sum command or this uh, symbol sum from the palette, then Mathematica is usually going to treat this as a symbol. So um, in particular, let's calculate this sum from zero to, to N. Let's make sure N is cleared. Um, if you do this, so Mathematica will treat this sum symbolically and calculate the sum of this geometric series and give you an analytical result. Um, this could be a good thing when you're uh, when you want to find an exact result and you want to do things symbolically. Uh, but if you want to do things numerically, then this would be too slow. It may slow you down doing analytical compu computations instead of numericals, uh, or numerical computations. So in this case, if I wanted to calculate this sum numerically, I could first create a vector. Uh, let's call it v and I can use the range command to build it and the vector will go from 2 to 8 and then if I want to calculate the sum of all these elements I can simply say total and that will add together all elements of a list and this will happen much faster if the list consists of, of numbers faster compared to the symbolic sum function of uh, Mathematica. Um, now let's suppose I want to do vector summation using a do loop. So I have already defined a vector here and I want to sum all of its elements using the loop. Then I can say the sum s that I'm initializing to zero I will add to it each element of V and go from one up to the length of the vector V. So that's the size of the vector V. Um, so that will automatically loop from the first element up to the last element and then close the loop and then output S and the result is again 35. Okay, so this is the way we do do loops in Mathematica. You can also check out the command for uh, which has a slightly different syntax. It's closer to C or C++ syntax or Fortran, but it accomplishes the same thing. Uh, but with the for command, you have to use uh, you, you specify the iterations at the iterator i at the beginning of the for loop. Uh, you can look at the Mathematica documentation for that one. We're not going to cover it here, uh, but we're going to cover while loops. Sometimes the number of a, uh, of times a set of uh, commands uh, that is to be repeated is not known. So we don't know how many times uh, we want to repeat the do loop. In these cases, uh, one may find it convenient to use a while loop. So the syntax would be while and then a condition and then some code to execute. Um, You can find more in the mathematical documentation about the syntax. Um, so, for example, let's suppose that I want to count from one to four using a while loops. I, I can type n equals one and then use while and say that while n is lower than 4, keep printing the value of n. 
and then after you print n uh, increase its value by one or increment by one so let's try this so we, this keeps doing the loop until n uh, stops being lower than four so uh, when n equals four it stops counting um, the n plus plus command uh, you may be familiar from that from C++. If not, then this just means n equals n plus 1. So that will do the same thing. If I actually want to stop when n, n equals 4, then I can type n lower or equal to 4. And then it will stop when n equals 4. Uh, and obviously the same here. Um, sometimes uh, you may want to do a nested loop that's a loop inside a loop um, so let's suppose we want to create an array and set all its elements to one so first let's create an array um, one way to do the to do so is to use the array command and then let's do this one symbolically so I can type sharp sharp and then use a pure function applied to three comma three so that will create a three by three matrix with symbolic uh, entries for each element m i j um, i could do the same thing using the table command m I comma J and then specify that I want I to go from one to three and J to go from one to three that will also create a matrix M that's three by three I can use matrix form to visualize that in usual mathematical mathematical notation okay so now let's suppose I want to do do loop and set all values of this matrix to unity I can use do inside a do and then loop over the index i and the index j so let's do the index j first from 1 to 3 so now this is looping over all values of j and then it will do that for each i from one to three so for each value of i it will take each j and set uh let's suppose i'm setting those to one uh if i execute that loop and let's try to print out the matrix m then i'm getting one everywhere um, there is a slightly briefer way to do this loop so instead of putting a do inside a do I can simply write do one time and then simply have two iterators in the end of the do command so do and then the code I want to execute and then the first iterator and the second iterator uh, and let's try set it to two this time just to see if it works and let's ask for m and indeed uh, this worked as expected okay so we talked about do loops and nested do loops and while loops uh, the last kind of iteration I want to talk about is uh, recursion and iterative functions so let's suppose I want to define the factorial function using iteration uh, to do that using a recursive function I could say factorial that's my own definition of factorial of k and then use delayed equals and then if k 
equals one. Remember, you have to use a double equals here because this is a test, uh, which may be true or false. So k equals equals one. Then the factorial will be one. Otherwise, I would go and compute k times the factorial of k minus one. Okay, so what I've done here is I've specified a recursive function where um, Mathematica will try and evaluate this function for some value of k. If it's one, it will give you one. But if it's, let's say, two, then it will say two times factorial of one and then go and evaluate this function again. And then the factorial of one is one and then it will stop. Is two times one, which is two. And if you give it k equals three, then it will go here and calculate three times factorial of two. The factorial of two is uh, going to be calculated in the same way as I just mentioned. Uh, it will go recursively via the factorial of two um, by plugging k equals two here and so on. Uh, so let's see if the factorial of 6 is correct and it's 720 and let's compare this to Mathematica's own factorial function so 6 factorial is 720 as expected um, let's try a bigger number let's try 100 factorial and let's try far iterative function works and it does And uh, alternatively, you can use factorial with a capital F. That's the mathematical default command for factorial. Uh, and that will give the same thing. So uh, this command and this command are exactly the same. Mathematica will use the exact same way of computing the factorial in those two cases. Um, let's use a recursive function to calculate the sum of a series, just like we did before. Uh, so let's define a, sumption, a function that's called sum series of m, and then delayed equals, and then if m equals zero, then the sum is zero. Uh, otherwise, take m and add sum series of m minus 1 to it. Uh, so this is exactly the same as what we did here, except instead of uh, multiplication, we have addition. Uh, so let's do that. And let's suppose I want to sum a series um, so the series I'm, I'm, I want to sum is the sum from i equal 0 to some number m of i. So again, if I try to do this, Mathematica will evaluate this sum analytically and give me the result. Um, so this uh, sum series function should give me the same result as this if I tried for some integer value of m. So let's try to sum the numbers from uh, 0 to 10, 55. And of course, uh, if I substitute here uh, 10 and 10, I'm going to get 55. So um, that's how you can sum a series by using a, a recursive function. Okay, and as a final example, uh, let's use a, recurs a recursive function to define a Fibonacci sequence. So let's call the function 
Fibonacci of n and then I can use a which statement so if n equals 0 the Fibonacci number is 0 and if n equals 1 the Fibonacci number is 1 that's the definition of the Fibonacci sequence and the next elements uh, if n is 2 or higher uh, I can define those by recursion and the definition is that it's n minus 1 Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2 so this is it this is a very simple definition of a Fibonacci sequence uh, using recursion and the which statement if you haven't seen uh, the definition of the which statement then you can go back and watch the previous video on the uh, if and which statements or you can type question mark which and read the mathematical documentation on this syntax so let's define this function and try and calculate the Fibonacci number uh, 10 and this didn't quite work and the reason it didn't work is that n has a value of 10 because I used n somewhere earlier so let me clear the value of n again and then define the function and then let's try and call it so again it's too late now because uh, these values have been assigned so let me just quit the kernel and uh, run it again okay so let's ask for Fibonacci of 10 okay so I've been making a mistake actually so um, the syntax is wrong here so I need a third uh, condition here so I left this out so the which statement is if n equals 0 the Fibonacci number is 0 if n equals 1 it's 1 and if n is greater than 1 then it's Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2 uh, and let's see if this works okay and it does and um, let's compare to Mathematica's default Fibonacci sequence number 20 and we get the same result of course um, recursion may be a little expensive so uh, we can try and time these results absolute timing Uh, and try some large number and let's hide the number let's just compute it uh, let's try 10,000 um, okay let's try 1 million okay so this is quite optimized um, let's try it with our recursive function You see that already at 100 uh, it's been quite slow um, so again recursion uh, should only be used if absolutely necessary otherwise the performance of recursive functions will be quite slow because iterating over and over and over like this is uh, expensive computationally so let me abort this evaluation and try and calculate something smaller okay so you can you see that um, our function is just the Fibonacci of 20 uh, takes 
10 times more than what Mathematica needs to calculate for the Fibonacci of a million. Okay, so uh, that was the description of how to do dual and while loops and uh, calculate recursive functions in Mathematica. In future videos, we will learn how to do such operations with uh, actually avoiding loops as much as possible uh, in order to improve performance. And we will see that uh, by vectorizing operations uh, or using pure functions and so on, one can speed up the code considerably and make uh, create mathematical programs that are just as fast as Fortran or C++ and so on.